Hello, in this video I will demonstrate four new brushes in Corel Painter 2020. They are in the watercolor category, and they're the first four brushes in the category, starting with Stencil Flow Map Buildup, Hatched Color Expression, Flat Grainy Wash, and the Mixer Brush. Okay, now these are watercolor brushes. They're grainy and granular, and they all have a bit of a run to them. Okay, let's start with the stencil flow map. Now, the thing that's important to know about the stencil flow map buildup is that it utilizes dab stencils and it utilizes the flow map. So whatever flow map is uh, selected will determine the way the brush paints or looks when it paints. So I've selected this kind of dark green here. And as I paint with it, you'll see that the brush does kind of run as I paint. And it has that texture of this flow map that was selected. Now, the beauty of this brush is that you can select any flow map, but you also can select free flow. And if you select free flow, then you're just going to get a wash that goes across uh, the page. And as I said, these brushes are granular. Now, build up means that as you paint with the brush, it will build to black. So you might want to start with a very light color and then let it begin to build up. Um, and it will ultimately get darker and darker and darker until you get to uh, almost black, if not all the way to black. If it's too dark for you, you can always reduce the opacity. Uh, it's at a 10% opacity, but you can always reduce it if you want. The next brush we're going to look at is Hatched Color Expression. Hatched Color Expression uses the function in Painter called Color Expression. The, and it, it's set to pressure for the expression. What that means is that with light pressure, I'm going to paint with the color in the back or the additional color. And I want that to be kind of a yellowy color. And then if I have heavy pressure, I paint with what's called the main color, the color in the front. And I'm going to make that a kind of a dark turquoisey color. So light pressure paints the additional color. Heavy pressure paints the main color. This is a captured dab. The dab, if we look at it, is kind of, well, that's the way the brush paints. It's going to be spidery like this and go from one color to the other. Okay, so let's just draw this. Now, it's also going to go, as, as you go from light to dark, it's going to blend. So that sort of yellow is going to blend into the blue so you'll get greens in between. So we start with that yellow, and as I increase my pressure, it gets greener and greener and greener uh, until we get all the way to blue. Now, it, you also can come back with a lighter color or a lighter stroke and take out some of the color that you've put in there. And you get these beautiful uh, textures with it as well. Okay, let's go to Flat Grainy Wash. Now the Flat Grainy Wash brush is a, uh, it utilizes a uh, Wacom art pen. So you can actually rotate the barrel. And so a flat brush like this means you can paint from the flat edge or from the pointy edge, okay, just like you would uh, a flat brush traditionally. Now, I want to take this. Uh, my paper was not on the right paper when I started, but that's okay. 
I'm going to put it back to uh, the cold pressed watercolor. Now, as I paint with this brush, it's going to kind of jump over itself and give you sort of a, a, a variation in the uh, color. It'll be a little bit lighter and darker, but in a sort of linear fashion. That is, if you're painting from side to side with the profile of the brush perpendicular. If I make it parallel to the ground and go across, it's not going to get that same linear uh, look. Uh, it will give you a little bit more of a, well, you can see it's almost wave-like, okay? Uh, and it is affected very heavily by paper texture. So if I take it to uh, a different kind of paper texture, and we'll go back to this coarse chipboard. And if you look at it, I've got that set to 400, 400, and 100. Now if I paint across, I'm going to get, see that, that texture that comes from the coarse chipboard. Okay. So that gives you an idea of how these uh, paint. Well, we've got one more, the mixer brush. Now, what I want to show you with the mixer is that at its default setting, um, if we look at its dab profile, you'll see that the dab is heavy at one end and light at the other. So if I paint from left to right, I'm going to get the darker edge at the bottom right to left, and the darker edge is at the top. Down, the darker edge is to the left, and up, the darker edge is to the right. Okay, that's just a function of the fact that this uh, dab profile is uh, darker at one end and lighter at the other. Now, we have something new in Painter 2. We have the ability with captured dabs to change the dab profile, which we didn't have before. So I could go to a different profile. Now this one is not going to make a lot of difference, uh, but some dabs, it will make a huge amount of difference. But if you notice it, when I paint with it, see how it really doesn't change the look of it. But like I said, with some uh, captured dabs, that will give you a very different look. Okay, I'm going to go back to my uh, cold press watercolor paper. And I will get rid of that watercolor layer. And I want to show you why the mixer brush is called mixer. And it's called that because, and what I'm going to do is load a selection so that I can paint within the selection. Now, what I did is I went to my color set library and I came down to Painter Colors and I selected Ultramarine and I selected Deep Gold Ochre and I put them in the mixer palette and mixed them together. So if I select this blue at this far end, that's Ultramarine and if I get start to paint it in, you see that it's that blue color. It's quite lovely. If I come down to this edge, I'm getting the deep gold ochre, and, which is also a lovely color. Now, we've mixed these two, and if I select there and paint I've got a gray-brown uh, there. And if I select over here where I should be getting green, the mixture of the yellow and blue, I get more of a blue-gray. It's almost a Payne's gray. Uh, now, both of those colors are really lovely, and I, I really enjoy using the mixer pad to, uh, to mix colors. But you 
don't have to. You can actually use any one of these watercolor brushes can be a mixer brush. But watch what happens. If I take that uh, ultramarine and I try to put it on lightly and I begin to increase my pressure so that it gets darker and darker and darker and darker. And then I switch to the gold. And I'm going to put a little dark edge at the top. And then I'm going to go light, really light. And I'm going to start going darker and darker, darker. And then I'm going to go light again. Okay, so now if I take my Alt key or Option key for the PC and I select the color, this first color is like that brown that's up here, but it's a richer color. If I select the next one, I'm actually getting green, and it's a sort of a light olive. I come down a little darker here, I'm getting a darker green, and this one is somewhat grayed out. If I come down to here, I've got that darker brown. Come into there, and I've got a darker olive. Come here, and I've got a blue-green. And this one would be kind of a more of a green green. Okay. Okay. So what I'm trying to show you is that you can take watercolor brushes, the watercolor category brushes, and paint them on top of each other. And you get these beautiful mixtures. And you can even then go in and grab, say, a blue that's there and maybe mix it with this green. And we've got a whole new color going. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice way of mixing color. You can sample the color from here and put it into a new document. Or you could actually just save this document as a uh, color uh, a mixer pad. All right, I'm going to move this over to the side. And let's see if we can do a quick painting. Actually, I'm going to close it. Okay, so I'm going to open up a new document that is similar to that one. There we go. Let's make it a little smaller. And let's go back to the color and we'll start the color wheel and we'll start with the stencil flow map. Now, in this case, I want to make sure that the uh, flow map selected is the free flow. I'm going to go to a kind of blue green and I'm going to select a very light color. I'm going to, I don't want to work where I'm painting with just a little tiny brush or here, let me make this darker for the moment to show you what I mean. I don't want to paint with a little tiny brush or have to paint heavy to get a big brush. So what I need to do is change the fact that this brush goes from a small size to a heavy size, I mean to a large size, depending on pressure. So if I come up to the size icon and I take off the expression pressure, just go to none, now the brush is not going to go from, from small to large with the pressure uh, that I'm applying. I'm going to hold down my uh, my control plus my alt key and that will allow me to change the size of a brush. If you're on a Mac, this is why I was confused at first, I kept thinking command. If you're on a Mac, you use command option to make your brush larger. All right, as I said, I have a very light uh, brush. 
We let me check the paper. The paper is the cold press water paper, watercolor paper. So I'm just going to paint lightly across the top, and that's beginning to give me a sky. Now, if it covers over the same area, it's going to get darker. So in this case, I've got the sky kind of going from light to dark near the horizon. Now, remember, I can change to a different flow map. So I'm going to change to this high contrast cloud. And I'm going to do the same thing again up here at the top. And I'm going to go over it twice. And what that did is sort of gave me a little bit of a textured look of clouds. I actually, I'm going to take this down a little bit grayer. Because that looked a little bit too bright to me. And I'll take that off. And I took some off the bottom, but that's okay. And now I'll take that through. Okay, there you go. Now I'm, I'm beginning to, it's beginning to look a little more cloud-like. I'm going to change the paper to this chip, uh, coarse chipboard. And if we look, you'll see that it's set up to 400, 400, 100 scale. I'm going to pick a kind of uh, golden brown sort of color. And uh, I'm going to paint that. Ooh, that's too dark, but isn't that pretty? I'm going to go up a lot lighter on that. Real light. That's better. And then I'm going to hit it a little heavier down here in the foreground so that it's kind of darkening as it's come forward. Now I'm going to go to the mixer. Actually, I'm going to go to the flat grainy wash. I still have the paper at that chipboard. And I'm going to take kind of a gray green and I'll lightly put it back here. And I want it to be a little bit darker in the front. So it's giving me some texture and a little darkness added to it. Okay, so we've got sort of a ground that's going back to the back. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take this grainy wash I'm going to make it pretty dark. This is a grainy wash bristle brush. Um, I don't remember if this is the right size or not. Let me hit it back to its normal. It's 20 pixels wide, and that's too wide. I want to take that to a smaller size, so we'll bring it down to about 10. I'm going to hold my shift key down because I want kind of a straight line. And I'll go straight up and down like that, and it tends to blend a bit. And what I've got is sort of a trunk. And I'm going to put in some other lines here. And like I said, it's kind of bristly, and that blends a bit. I don't want to add a lot of other brushes to this. As I said, I, I just wanted to stay with these brushes. Okay, I'm going to make, I think I'm going to stay with this in a dark green. But I want to make it a little more olive. And I'll take the back ground. And let's give it a little more orange look like that. Now we go to this hatched color expression. And I'm going to stay on the same uh, watercolor layer. It's it's going to make uh, some linear stuff happening or, or lines that happen around it in blue. 
And I may not like that, and if I don't, I'll uh, switch to another layer. And it's okay, but I think it would be better if I do switch to another layer. So I'm going to add a watercolor layer. And I want to make this a little bit lighter green and this a little bit lighter in the orange color. And I'll put some of that orange on top, or the mixture of orange and green. Put some dark back down here. We'll go back to this, and let's make it a dark brown, and we'll make this more orangey. So now when I come in with the light, light stroke, I'm getting a little more of the orange, and heavy stroke gives me that darker uh, Darker color. It's a little bit, the whole thing's a little bit too dark for my taste, but we get the idea of how it's going. Now I can go to thick and thin. I can bring this down to the dark. Whoops, I want to be here and bring it down to the dark. And this will, this is a thick and thin brush, and I'm just going to put some indication of tree trunks and branches. Not a lot, just a little bit of an indication. Something like that. And so what you've got here is, a, is generally um, how I would go about using these brushes to paint with, uh, with uh, making a watercolor. Now, as I said, they're very runny and granular. I wouldn't use them by themselves. I would use them more uh, as accents with real watercolor to bring in that granulation and to bring in the texture. But they're very useful brushes and do give uh, the concept of mixing your colors with watercolor a try. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.